Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, dear viewers on YouTube uh, and Facebook. This is an event organized by Majlis Ansarullah Scotland, uh, our regional Tarbiyat Forum. And the theme for tonight is Quran Al Fajr. And Alhamdulillah, we are so blessed to have our revered Hafiz Fazl Rabi Sahib who is very popular, and I guess everyone knows him on MTA, uh, joining us today to give us a keynote address. As Muslims, we always start our proceedings with a recitation from the Holy Quran, and I call on our brother, Ibrahim Mutajo Sahib, to give our recitation in the Holy Quran with this English translation. Ibrahim Mutajo Sahib. Assalamu <laughs> I shall be reciting Surah Al Bani Surah Hill, verses 79 to 83. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Aqimi salati zidluki shamsi ila ghazaqil layni wa Qur'an al-fajr. In the Quran, Fajri Kana Mashuda Wamin al Layli Fata Hajjad Bihi Nafila Talak Asa. Sultan <laughs> وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا um, I seek refuge in Allah from Satan the accursed, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, ever merciful. Observe prayer at the declining and paling of the sun unto the darkness of the night, and the recitation of the Holy Quran in prayer at dawn. Verily, the recitation of the Holy Quran at dawn is specially acceptable to God. And wake up for it, that is the Quran, in the later part of the night as a supererogatory service for thee. It may be that thy Lord will raise thee to an exalted station. And say, O oh my Lord, make my entry a good entry and then make me come forth with a good forthcoming and grant me from thyself a helping power. And say, truth has come and falsehood has vanished away. Falsehood does indeed vanish away fast. And we are gradually revealing of the Quran that which is a healing 
and a mercy to the believers, but it only adds to the loss of the wrongdoers. So I can listen. So I'm going to come to that. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our dear brother uh, Ibrahim uh, Mutajusai for that beautiful recitation uh, with this uh, English uh, translation. We now move to the welcome address. And with this, I call upon our respected Nazmi Allah, Majlis and Surah Scotland, Mr. Tahir Nassim Ahmed to give his uh, welcome address. If you can unmute yourself, please, Mr. Tahir. Sir. Thank you, Emma, sir. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear members of Jamaat. I welcome to all of you in our regional Tarbiyat Forum 2021. <clears throat> I would like to say thanks all of our Ansar brothers and other Jamaat members who are attending this program. I would also thanks, special thanks our respected Murabi Silsla, Hafiz Fazle Rabbi Saab and our Qaid Tarbiyat Maulana Fazlur Rahman Sahib who give their time today. Jazakallah for your time. Jazakallah. Thank you very much. Uh, that was pretty short and sweet. Uh, thank you very much, our Nazmi Allah, respected uh, Tahir Nasim Sab, uh, for that uh, brief welcome address. We now move on to uh, our next uh, on the program, which is uh, a Nazim to be recited by our revered brother, Nasser Mahmoud Sahib. Nasser Mahmoud Sahib, you can unmute yourself and turn your camera on, please. Do you salam alaikum? Well, it's long. Kalam Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salatu wa salam O Safi Quran Majid Noor Furqan Hai jo sab noor O se Ajla nikla Noor Furqan Hai jo sab noor O se Ajela Nikla Pak Vodi Say a Nivarika Daria Nikla Pak Vodi Say a Nivarika Daria Nikla Haki to he de camore jai Jalata poda Haki to he de camore jai Jalata poda Naga ha reb se ye chashmai asifa nikla Nure furka hai jo sab nooron se ajila nikla Nure furka hai jo Sab nooron se ajla nikla Ya ilahi tera furka hai ke Ik alam hai Ya ilahi tera furka hai ke Ik alam hai Jho zaroori tha wo sab ism Muhayya nikla 
जो जरूरी था वो सब इस में मुहैया निकला नूर फुर है जो सब नूरों से अजला निकला पाक वो जे से ये अनवार का दरिया निकला सब जहां छान चुके सारी दुखाने देखी सब जहां छान चुके सारी दुकाने देखी मैं इरफा का यही एक ही शीशा निकला नूर फुर है जो सब नूरों से अजला निकला पाक वो जे से वो अनवार का Translation The light of the Holy Quran is a light more clear and bright by far than any other kind of light. And holy indeed is he who is the source of this veritable river of radiance, of faith in the unity of God. The plant indeed had started to wither away and die. When all of a sudden this limpid spring burst into being and began to flow. Lord, does thy constitute only a bit, or it is a universe in itself? For whatever was indispensable for mankind, for progress of the human mind, we find amply provided in this marvelous scriptures. Over the whole world, I have let my thought range in a diligent search. And I have tried every shop in the marketplace. Zafla. Jazakum Allah, Muhammad Jazak, Brother Nasser Mahmoud Sab, for that beautiful uh, recitation of Nazim, and then obviously it's an uh, English translation as well. We now move on to our next uh, program. Uh, on the next on the program, which is uh, essays from the writings of the Prophet Zaya, uh, to be given by our. Uh, Zaim Ansarullah Gragos South, Mr. Moaz Ahmed Sahib. Asalaamu Alaikum. Read a portion of the writings of the Promised Messiah titled A Wonderful Book. The Promised Messiah <clears throat> has said that the Holy Quran is a wonderful book. The unlettered person, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did not only give a book to the world and taught wisdom, he also made them tread on the path of purification. So much so that they became the recipients of the help of God. Behold and ponder over it. The Holy Quran guides every type of man to what he wishes to get the Almighty God, and quenches the thirst of every thirsty person who is thirsting for truth. Just imagine to whom was granted this fountainhead of light. It was given to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who on the one hand was unlettered, and on the other hand he talked of things that had never been taught. This is the perfect grace of God, so that people may be able to understand as to how far can man go in having communion with God. This is taken from Malfuzah, Volume 1. Jazakumullah. Jazakumullah, Brother Moaz Ahmed, uh, for that uh, beautiful uh, caption from the Promised Messiah, Imam Mahdi. Azram Ahmed, alayhi salam. 
We now move to the climax of the uh, event, and I believe uh, our keynote speaker is not anyone that needs any introduction. If you have been following any of these uh, virtual events or on MTA, it's a very popular face. If you've been visiting uh, uh, um, any of the boxes down in, uh, in London during Ramadan, it's a very regular voice. If you watch Al Taltil, that is a very regular voice. So there ain't any further description I can give to this uh, gentleman, our revered keynote speaker today, Hafiz Fazal Rabi Sahib. Hafiz Sahib, over to you. Jazakumullah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <clears throat> May peace and blessings of Allah be upon all of you. <clears throat> all of you. First of all, I greatly, I am greatly privileged and honored to be invited this evening by Majlis Ansarullah Scotland region. And the topic of today's forum, Tarbiyat forum, is Quranul Fajr. And the recitation of the Holy Quran, which you heard in the beginning of the program, basically from Surah Bani Israel. And starting verse was verse number 79. Where this word Quran al Fajr, <clears throat> or uh, these two words, Quran and al Fajr, has been repeated twice, has been used uh, twice. The very first word is aqim and it means establish observe aqim is salata li duluq is shamsi ila ghasaq al layl this is the first part of this verse verse number 79 and wa quran al fajr in quran al fajr kana mashhuda now very eloquently and in a very compact way, the Holy Quran has described the five fundamental prayers, obligatory prayers in this verse of the Holy Quran. And the timing has been mentioned. First of all, we say that a salat is a term which is used for offering and observing the prayer, the etiquettes in which we bow down, we prostrate, we uh, seek forgiveness of Almighty Allah, we praise Almighty Allah, the whole, you know, the units start starting from in the beginning, raising our hands and saying Aslam right and left. That is called Salat. And the Holy Quran says, Aqim is Salata. And this is a commandment not to a, a company or a congregation, but a one-to-one. -one. The Holy Quran basically addresses to one person. And if it is addressing one-to-one, -one, it means whenever a person reads or listens to this message, the Holy Quran addresses to that person as well. So means that Aqim is Salata, O reader of the Holy Quran, O listener of the Holy Quran, the recitation of the Holy Quran, the message of the Holy Quran. Re observe the prayer. Establish the prayer. Aqim. It's not Iqra is Salata, but say Aqim that you have to be punctual. You have to observe the prayer with due its uh, rights, conditions, and uh, then, uh, you know, it's disciplines. And after that, the word is لِدُلُوكِ shamsi ila غَسَقِ اللَّيْلِ Now we know that, that the, there are two calendars have been mentioned in the Holy Quran. One is a solar calendar. It is also very significant and important. And also a lunar calendar related to the moon. Some of our... Uh, Ibadat, like for example, starting of the fasting is connected to a lunar calendar. You see that uh, to, to associated with the sighting of the moon or our Eidain, the Eid al Fitr and Eid al Adha, and uh, Hajj and other uh, congregational 
ibadat worships but the five daily prayers they have been connected with the shams that is why the word here liduluk shamsi ila ghasak allayl now if we go deeper into the meaning of these word where the particular the word is used ashams and ashams means the sun and liduluk shamsi the 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 important and the focal point is the word duluk and duluk duluk shamsi has three meanings first of all remember that the midday or you can say that meridian that is the you know you can say that 12 o'clock or just nisfu nahar just midday when the sun it's uh, on its uh, full uh, climax in the zenith and after that time when the sun starts declining or paling basically the word duluk starts from there and the duluk is shamsi covers three um paling or uh, that declining first of all the first is um afternoon prayer you see when sun declines then zuhr prayer has been mentioned and the late afternoon that is called asr prayer and when it comes to the full sunset you see when and it is then the maghrib prayer and the next word is that ila ghasaq al-layl the next two um prayers they have been mentioned with the word ghasaq al-layl meaning maghrib and isha the translation which you can find here in uh, the copies of the holy quran and uh, the tarjuma is say observe prayer at the declining and paling of the sun on to the darkness of the night so paling of the sun i told you there are three stages of that one the first stage is called dhuhr included in in that duluk and also the second asr then the maghrib and ghasaq al layli also touches the uh, the sunset so basically uh, through this verse if we go deeper into the meaning then duluk shams at the end and ghasaq al layli in the beginning basically the inside is the maghrib prayer and that is also very very important that a, uh, the whole day is going to finish and a new era or new uh, time is coming so from liduluk shams ila ghasaq al layl the four times of the prayers they have been mentioned but without name okay the only shams is there zuhr is not uh, mentioned here asr is not mentioned here this is uh, you can say the analytical or uh, from a lexicon or from arabic usage they they have been derived from there that how it is been used and then i said that the, the maghrib prayer and then the isha without using their name from liduluk shams ila ghasaq al layl they have been uh, pointed out very eloquently Uh, according to the usage of arabic and the quranic uh, uh, the lexicon now after that and also it is important that in from liduluk shams ila ghasaq al layl maghrib prayer in the both ways they had been touched and the importance and the significance maghrib also highlighted when we go deeper into that meaning and after that only one uh hour has been mentioned and it is say wa quran al fajr so the verb which start from aqim aqim is salata you should observe the prayer you should establish the prayer you should be punctual with all conditions and disciplines with attributive qualities also this aqim this verb is uh, basically applies on wa uh, quran al fajr so the four prayers have been mentioned without naming their name zuhr asr maghrib and isha and then the fajr but not it is said that salat al fajr that li duluk al shams ila ghasaq al layl wa salat al fajr no in surah an nur you can find the word salat al fajr there are three um, areas or three times of the privacy the holy quran categorically mentions and that is in chapter 24 verse number 59 chapter 24 verse number 59 surah nur 
where the word salat has come salat al fajr salat al isha okay but here the word is used wa quran al fajr and from this word quran al fajr the interpretation is done that here it means that the morning prayer the morning the you know the quran al fajr means the recitation at the time of the dawn now the um very simple meaning or you can say word for word meaning will be quran though this is the name of this book okay this is the name of this book of this revelation given to our holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but actually the quran meaning is recitation that is why when you open the copy of the holy quran are uh, translated by hazrat mauli sher ali sahib or uh, other you know any other uh, reading you will find wa quran al fajr the recitation of dawn because quran al fajr the construction in arabic means the recitation of dawn okay the word al fajr before i go further now that is it means that you have to establish the prayer and the recitation of the dawn and the recitation of the dawn the best example is the salat al fajr namaz you know uh, this uh, salat morning prayer congregational morning prayers or as if it is uh, conditions uh, do not uh, allow then uh, was the individual prayer but anyway quran al fajr means the morning prayer i like to invite your attention towards a great scholar um and uh, his name was um abu mansur as-sa'albi abu mansur as-sa'albi he was born in 350 hijra okay remember hijra is not a common era hijra and he passed away as 430 he was a great scholar of arabi arabic language and his uh, one book is very famous and well known it is in arabic and its name is is fiqhul lugha fiqhul lugha it means the understanding of understanding of the language was sirrul arabiya and the secret of the arabic secret of the arabic in this book he has outlined the 24 hours in arabic so arabic is very eloquent language for example in english there is only morning or noon or afternoon or evening and night okay and the big you know is not there is no any particular uh, our name even if you open the bible when the crucifixion of uh, jesus christ uh, peace be upon him alayhi salam has been mentioned sometimes you say that on the third hour he was crucified in some gospel say in the 6th hour so one uh, hour 1 2 first second third fourth and 11th 11th hour is also a, a idiom as well a proverb you know is usage as well as expression at 11th hour so in arabic every hour has been given a name and it is interesting to note that uh, when i was uh, reflecting on uh, this uh, point i found over 14 to 15 hours very eloquently and in a very demonst demonstrative uh, way have been mentioned in the holy quran and fajr is one of them okay now uh, ashfaq has been mentioned so there are 12 hours has been mentioned about the night hours every hour has a name in arabic and I, as i mentioned that uh, around 14 clearly have been mentioned in the quran and then uh, al shafaq al ghasaq so al shafaq basically comes after al ghurub we know that the when sun uh, uh, is uh, set and uh, basically this uh, continue uh, going to disappear that is al ghurub okay the you know that is uh, sunset and then uh, after that is the shafaq when there is a red Uh, redness in the horizon and after when there is a full night uh, comes and it uh, night becomes darker it is called uh, uh, al ghasaq now the point i like to mention though it is understood that the quran al fajr is the morning prayer 
but the recitation of the holy quran is not only to be understood what is done in the morning prayer okay as we know that in every prayer like for example if there is a congregational uh, maghrib prayer recitation you know traditionally is very short as compared to others then a bit you know medium size in isha and a larger proportion is recited in the in fajr prayer and this is another practical uh, demonstration of the quran al fajr we find that in uh, surah uh, in al jumwa which is a big congregation you know the, the in friday even in the friday if you uh, just uh, surah al ala and al ghashiyah they are not a big surah you see they are more or less uh, you know surah al ala is a little ha- uh, more than half page okay and uh, also al ghashiyah a little bigger but not you know a quite big surah but in the recitation uh, in the morning sometime you know find we traditions of the holy prophet sallam that he used to recite uh, long portions and uh, i just remember that uh, when uh, i was uh, quite fortunate to go to um, qadian in uh, jasa slana many many years back by i am talking about 30 years at that time hazrat mirza wasim ahmed sahib uh, he was nazir e ala and he was the imam and i um, noticed that he used to recite quite big surah like surah qaf qaf uh, surah number 50 and some other surahs is quite you know very 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 good uh, uh, recitation so point is that that the quran al fajr does not only meaning the morning recitation but before as well the recitation before that and uh, then the the mean the recitation in the prayer and after that as well and this is very c- common practice in our jumaat as well and we um, you know this uh, we enjoin upon the upon the people as well and our khulafa always mentioned about the recitation of the holy quran um, in the fajr time so if the fajr hour has been mentioned the quran al fajr and the the hour has been mentioned that this is the shafaq this is al ghasaq and as sahar for example mustaghfirina bil ashar it is mentioned that on the dawn at the you know pre dawn time when um, you know there is uh, people uh, offer the tahajjud prayer and one of the quality and the attribute of the believers have been mentioned that mustaghfirina bil ashar or yastaghfiruna that uh, they they seek forgiveness at pre dawn time and that hour okay and if we take that eight uh, uh, rakat and three with our 11 rakat we find that what is the uh, you know a very good usage of one hour you know in that time so when al fajr starts it means that we have been enjoined very eloquently that we should recite the holy quran if possible before the fajr prayer in fajr prayer after the fajr prayer because this hour is for the recitation of the holy quran and the recitation of the holy quran either in uh, prayer in fajr prayer before or after uh, the, it has been mentioned twice because it say aqim as salata li duluq al shams ila ghasaq al layl wa quran al fajr the hour of fajr has been highlighted singled out and then say inna quran al fajr we know that the inna the word inna is used first to show the certainty the you know it is a is a uh, word for emphasis to to stress uh, of uh, you know emphasis so say in quran al fajr kana mashhuda that the recitation at dawn is specially accepted and recorded by allah the almighty or by the angels which have been uh, you know uh, given that duty in tafsir al kabir of hazrat muslim aur radhi allah taala anhu when you open the commentary or uh, exegetical studies exegetical studies of this surah and especially this verse you will find that huzur radhi allah taala anhu mentioned about uh, a, a hadith and this is a, a hadith uh, from sunan tirmizi where the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned the coming or uh, uh, the witnessing of the angels at the dawn time okay that is a just a, you know like a uh, shift change 
like a uh, the shift of the angels in the morning time and when it is changes in the dawn time and that is why say kana mashhuda that when angels find that the people are reciting the holy quran either in the prayer which is on the top of the agenda top of the list and after that because which is in that hour it is specially recorded for that one because it is called mashhud and the word mashhud is basically from shahadat okay and in at that time the angels especially are sent down to take the charge uh, from the previous uh, shift as mentioned by or figuratively or how uh, it it happens allah knows the best but according to the words of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is has been mentioned now um it is says that uh, in sunan tirmizi say that at that time say um what was the condition of uh, my servants my um, ibad at that time he said they were offering the prayer and um, you know um th- th- that is a very um, special time for that one so with regards to that fiqh uh, loga that um, a uh, book uh, it is quite clear that in this verse number 79 the five daily prayers they have been mentioned then the salatul fajr without using the na- name of the salat that it has been men- mentioned with the quran al fajr the repetition coming quran al fajr twice gives a more indication that we should be mindful of our uh, morning uh, uh, prayer now um, we know that uh, uh, we can find that um, in uh, qadian the birthplace of hazrat masih maud la satu waslam or you can say the markaz awal of uh, ahmadiyya muslim community um i just remember that there was a non ahmadi um journalist came in qadian and that is not uh, at the time of the promised messiah this is uh, i think that's 1912 uh, 1912 at that time you know in the khilafat ula in the first uh, uh, khilafat uh, period and he said that after offering the fajr prayer when i came out and i visited the qadian the streets i found the whole atmosphere filled in with the recitation of the holy quran even the shopkeepers who just opened you know uh, the shutter of his uh, or the door of his uh, shop he was also reading the holy quran at that time there was no light under the lamp or candle light they were reading the holy quran male or female young and old they were a great echo a quranic echo of uh, recitation of the holy quran and that is why always um hazrat masih maud la satu waslam in his writings the re- recitation of the holy quran and especially the khulfaz uh, in their writings in the in their uh, sermons in their different addresses the recitation of the holy quran uh, is highlighted and especially uh, the morning uh, prayer now um we find that uh, sometime that was a part of tarbiyat that uh, i have um listened to a friday sermon as well of the uh, khalifat al masih rabi rahimullah taala which was delivered in 4th uh, july 1997 and in which he said that if your child goes to school please make sure that he or she recites the holy quran mothers are mindful of their ch- children you know taking the meal of the breakfast he said leave the breakfast take the spiritual breakfast first and that is why that was a common uh, practice that unless a child or the members of the family are not completed their morning recitation they were not allowed to come to the maida meaning the table for breakfast so that was their tarbiyat that should be highlighted again and again now because of the social media and other engagement the gadgets and the other uh, a lot of engagements people do not uh, go to uh, bed um, uh, early uh, you know as uh, was uh, our tradition and uh, that is why they um, they 
sometimes they are unable to get up early in the morning leave about the you know forget about the uh, yeah, the tahajjud prayer even the fajr prayer is missed and if the fajr prayer is missed the quran al fajr is missed and the after uh, recitation of the whole of the holy quran is missed so even you have a short time because if a person say okay i am i have offered the prayer now i have to go to the work you can recite the holy quran whatever you have memorized repeatedly and this is a good time uh, and this is a fresh time to repeat your hifz whatever you have uh, revi- uh, you have already done that you can learn a new one verse or two verse or you can repeat but this is the right time for you to be mindful of your recitation now i can give you um a verse of the holy quran which i just remember from i think surah yunus and that will be the concluding of this one before we going to the question answer and it is um verse number 62 remember 62 chapter number 10 surah yunus and part number 11 in which it mentions that o prophet it is mentioned to towards the prophet of uh, islam hazrat muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam that whatever the your condition your state in which you are or you recite from the holy quran or anything you you should you do we are shahudan is tufiduna fi we are basically witnessing all that whatever you do that here in this verse one amal singled out and that is the quran wa ma tatlu minhu min quran whatever you recite from the holy quran and that matter basically in the quran al fajri kana mashuda has been highlighted in a very eloquent way and that verse this verse number 79 is inviting us that we should be mindful for our uh, friday prayer on time and also the recitation of the holy quran on time in that before that and after that because this is a very very uh, important time and also it is very important that we should be mindful of reciting the holy quran with translation because without translation we cannot understand what is inside and what is li- uh, written in that letter which has been sent in our name lastly i like to mention one incident of uh, hazrat uh, choudhury mohammed zafurullah khan sahib uh, may allah be pleased with him everybody knows because he has a great connection with the uk jamaat he uh, was there for many many years and once he delivered a khutbah a friday sermon and after you know in this friday uh, in a friday sermon he just uh, rec- um, uttered uh, spoke some arabic words some arabic sentences four or five sentences and then he started the khutbah saniya and finished that and he did that with the purpose and after that people came to him because he wanted to listen to him because he was very eloquent very you know uh, very um, um, eloquent person to speak with great uh, uh, wisdom he said chaudhary sahib what did you say in your uh, khutba in your friday because we did not understand anything he say have you read the holy quran the letter from god this is in arabic i was speaking arabic i was speaking some uh, sentences of uh, arabic and you were so anxious that you came to me and say f- wanted to find out what is in that one this is the case with the holy quran which is in arabic this is a letter is a guidance from god almighty so it is very important this way in this episode as a chodi sahib invited their attention that we should try our best and engage ourselves to learn the translation of the holy quran so that is my message to a uh, humble message that may allah enable us to be mindful of our fajr prayer on time and reciting the holy quran before in prayer and after that and use that hour that which has been mentioned quran al fajr in the memorization of the holy quran in revising the holy quran in reading the tarjuma because this is the hour of the recitation this is the hour of the quran may allah enable us to do that amen summa amen summa amen
think that's a very uh, faith inspiring uh, address by our revered uh, Hafiz Fazal Rabbi Sahib. Uh, we thank him very much uh, for taking time out of his very busy schedule. I know how busy he is uh, to join us uh, to deliver such an eloquent uh, message on the Holy Quran and so many kind of areas that he's actually gone into, which, which is quite enlightening for all of us. Uh, we now move on to the Q&A session. And I believe uh, um, we have our respected uh, um, Kai Taribiet, Majlis and Sarala UK. Uh, Fazal, Fazal Rahman as well with us now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Ji, shukriya kehna hai. Hafiz sahab ka unhoon hai time diya aur khuda ki tarah se jaysi Hafiz sahab mehnat kar rahe hai. Betor secretary Dadi Mul Quran ke Allah Ta'ala utke kaam mein barakat de Allah Ta'ala hume unki scheme par bhi asal to scheme unki taraf se aati hai. मैं सिर्फ ये कहना चाह रहा हूं छोटा सा वाक्य आपको सुनाता हूं एक दफा मैं यूके में ट्रेन पे जा रहा था तो एक अहमदी दोस्त मुझे नजर आए जरा बड़ी उम्र के थे बड़े अच्छे हंबल और बड़े तो मैंने ऐसे ही रमजान के दिन थे तो उनके साथ जिक्र किया कि माशाल्लाह आप कुरान तो पढ़ते होंगे तो यकदम वो खामोश हो गए और मैंने उनको कहा कि रमजान में तुम्हें पढ़ लेना चाहिए तो कहने लगे कि मुझे तो कुरान नहीं पढ़ना आता मैंने कहा आजकल तो बड़े जराए मौजूद हैं आपको पढ़ना नहीं आता तो आप ऑडियो सुन लिया करें अल इस्लाम मौजूद है मैंने कुछ निकाल के भी दिखाई मैं क्या देखते हैं इस्लाम है इसके ऊपर अतलावा सुने तो खैर उन्होंने मुझसे वादा किया लेकिन उन्होंने मुझे ये कहा कि मैं आपको एक बात बताता हूँ हम खुद बात भी सुनते हैं हम हर तरह सुनते हैं वो बात ठीक है एक मजमू याद दहानी होती है लेकिन पर्सनली मुझे आज तक मुझे कहते हैं मुझे तीस साल से ज्यादा अरसा हो गया मुझे कभी पर्सनली किसी ने नहीं कहा कि कुरान पढ़ा करो तो पता नहीं बहरहाल उस वक्त तो मैंने उनको दरखास्त की व्याध्या नहीं कराई खैर मेरा उनके साथ तल्लुक भी है मैं नाम तो नहीं लूंगा उनका लेकिन मैं आपको ये कहना चाह रहा हूं एज ए अंसार के मेम्बर के के देखें जो जैली तंजीमें हैं हमारा काम है हजरत साहब की तरफ से जो स्कीम आए हजरत साहब निजाम जमात जो हमें स्कीम देती है उसकी याद दहानी कराना प्यार से मोहब्बत के साथ और ऐसी याद दहानी करवाना कि अगर आपकी मजलिस में दस अंसार हैं तो अगर उनमें से नौ तिलावत करने वाले हैं तो ये ना समझे कि अक्सर तिलावत कर रही नो no. जब तक आप ये तसली ना कर लें कि दस के दस तिलावत करते हैं उस वक्त तक हमें तसली से नहीं बैठना चाहिए तो अल्लाह ताला करे कि हमारे वो जो रवायात हैं हर रोज सुबह के तलावत कुरान करीम करने की वो हमेशा कायम रहे मसीह मऊलम ने यही फरमाया कि तुम कुरान को हाथ में लो तो तुम्हारी फतह है तो जो जुबानी पढ़ सकते हैं वो जुबानी पढ़ें जो ऑडियो सुन सकते हैं वो ऑडियो सुने जो ऊपर से देख के पढ़ सकते हैं ऊपर से देख के पढ़ें लेकिन कुरान के साथ हमारा एक ऐसा ताल्लुक है इसके बगैर हमारी जिंदगी में फतह नहीं हमें मिल सकती तो अल्लाह तला हमें इसकी तोफीक अता फरमाए I think we are going to trouble you a little bit uh, if you can just uh, briefly in English for because uh, this is actually an English medium and I believe uh, everyone want to hear uh, you uh, summarize uh, it for us there would so be an English respond to say that uh, um, our auxiliary uh, system in jamaat and as ansarullah uh, we have to remind everyone of our member i have uh, i just uh, said um, uh, give i i have gave um, i have give, um, i gave an example that once uh, ahmadi nasser uh, met in a rail, uh, railway state railway um, train and i just uh, asked him that do you read quran and he just stopped and he that he said that yes i listen uh, friday sermon and other speeches but this is the first time somebody personally remind me that i have to read quran so it is our duty as a majlis ansarula as a nazm e ala as a nazm tarbiyat as a munsim tarbiyat ha hamare paas to bhi hota hai humne personally we have to remind person to person if there are 10 ansar and 9 uh, ansar are reciting holy quran 
we should uh, believe that it is enough. We should confirm that hundred percent, ten by ten Ansar are reciting Holy Quran daily. So this is the um, main uh, object, the task why we are arranging this year uh, again and again, reminding people that uh, about uh, Quran al Fajr. Is that Kumla? I think I think your English is better than the Urdu. Uh, uh, to, to my to my taste anyway so okay <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh, hafiz fazal ravi i know um uh, an epitome of uh, knowledge uh, do you, is there anything else you want to add before we bring the meeting to a close oh thank you so much for inviting me and jazakumullah for your uh, organization and uh, kai tarbiyasai for his kind words uh, may allah bless you all and uh, it is quite good that uh, each and every member of uh, not only the squandered region, basically every Ahmadi should be reminded, first of all, ourselves first, and then uh, in our immediate family members, extended family, and uh, basically all uh, Ahmadi brothers and sisters to be mindful, all five daily prayers, but especially the Fajr prayer and the recitation of the Holy Quran. And this hour, this is a great time for that one. Um, Jazakumullah, thank you. Jazakumullah. I guess uh, I'll probably fire one question to you before uh, we, we go there, and that is uh, uh, the Quran. Uh, th this question has been thrown to me before, and I just I thought I should just ask this medium for you that uh, there's this always a statement that uh, Ahmadis are not supposed to be following the non Ahmadis in the in the salat. Uh, but then when it comes to Holy Quran, uh, they are free to go and listen to any of their carries. So what, what is the advice and guidance on that? Listen to that, you know, listening, listening to the Holy Quran is not prohibited. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can listen, you can recite, you can take, uh, you know, that is a different thing. And, but with that, with the, you know, when you listen, you have your own accord, you have own your, uh, you, you can recite, uh, or you can uh, stop and start anytime. But it is Salat, when you say Allahu Akbar, until Imam finishes, you are under one command. Okay? And we have taken the command or the bad initiation of the promised Messiah, okay? So our movements, our actions are controlled by divinely appointed person. With the recitation, you can you just click or listen or you, know, you stop anytime. But with the prayer, there will be many uh, answers, but this is one of that. But when you start the prayer, you are under one obligation. Okay, right, left, down. Okay. And Allah Ta'ala has given us a command that your actions, your movements will be controlled by this divine system. So why should we go? Jazakumullah, uh, Jazakumullah. And there's another question which normally comes up, and that is also um, the aspect of uh, learning Quran. Um, there's been this issue of some of our kids, Ahmadi kids, who tend to learn from the non Ahmadis. Uh, and we have some instances where eventually they realize that after a while, uh, they start bringing some questions home that uh, from us are, is this, is this, and you know, they start questioning the Jamaat Ahmadiyya. Uh, what is your guidance on that? I mean, going to non Ahmadi <laughs> scholars to learn from them, and what is, what is that? Actually? I think it is very important questions. I am grateful that you have raised this uh, issue. That is why our beloved Imam, Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih al-Khamis Ayyadullah bin Nasir Aziz, initiated an international Talimul Quran Academy. And if you go to www.itqa.org.uk, this is our website, ITQA. Okay, and ITQA basically stands for International Talimul Quran Academy in which the free Quranic lessons are provided. Either a person, you know, four years old or 44 years old or whatever is the age, the lessons are provided free of charge and free of cost. And uh, not only the recitation of the Holy Quran, but also the translation lessons, the translation of the Holy Quran. And I like to announce here and give you this, uh, um, this understanding or this information that uh, six o'clock every Monday and Tuesday, six o'clock, there is open to all 
is a translation, split word translation, idiomatic translation, Urdu tarjuma. That is that class is uh, conducted from here. For the English, Wednesday and Thursday, every Wednesday and Thursday, six o'clock, uh, the translation cl uh, class is conducted online. Okay, so everybody is welcome. Is a congregational class. You can ask the question through email, through WhatsApp. But the two days for uh, Urdu tarjuma and two days for the English translation. Okay, and this academy is a multilingual academy. It means that we are starting in French, in Spanish, in Turkish, and German translation as well. And with regards to the recitation of the Holy Quran, we can provide the lessons. We have the qualified so people. Whether, for example, uh, as I mentioned, our lessons start from four years up. Okay, four years, whatever your age, we have uh, a class for you. You can go there. Otherwise, in Talimul Quran here department, we also running G1 courses. G1 starts from six to twelve for the Atfal and Nasrat. Then progression G2, G3. You see, if you go to our website, our uh, Amdia dot or you know the official website of uh, Jamaat Amdia UK. You find there in the Talimul Quran department, and all our eight courses are there. Either in, uh, for the, for example, Pan African, every Tuesday seven o'clock, uh, eight o'clock is the class is held for Pan African and new converts. That is called G7, G8, Tarjumat Quran advanced course is very heavily subscribed now, uh, but most welcome. Then uh, the family Quran learning class. So either a person wants to learn in Urdu or English, the classes are available. And if you want a smaller classes, then this international academy is available. And it is also very important that I should also remind you that uh, the recent initiative and the directive of Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih, and that is Waqfi Arzi, that everybody, especially from uh, the Amla, either from National or uh, from Khudam, Ansar and Lajna, their regional, from their national, their regional, their local, every member, and then all MD should take part in this Vakfiyazi scheme. Our Vakfiyazi scheme now in this pandemic, in this will be virtual Vakfiyazi. It is quite easy. You can do in the evening anytime because now this is also a virtual seminar in which, you know, this session, virtual Tarbiyat forum. So in the same way, by the grace of Allah, uh, it, it has started from National Amla, even now, um, a couple of our national Amla Satriyan, they are doing work for In actuality, Amir Saib Rafiq Ahmed Hayasa put his name first to be a part of this one. So I would uh, like to remind the Amla members, the office holders of Madlis Ansarullah, Scotland, and those who are listening to me in other regions or in Jamaat uh, um, uh, office holders or from Khudam or Ansar and Lajna and Jamaat, these are the four main categories and other Ahmadis that they should sign up for this work for and be the recipient. We have been given a target of 1000 and this in this virtual system, it is uh, very easy for us to do that one. People are signing up and uh, you should sign up uh, for work for RZ. Work for RZ is done this time virtually and it starts from with the two weeks to maximum six weeks according to the rules and regulation. And uh, the full uh, a system is chalked out in which you can be take part in their uh, AMLA um, meetings, in their Tarbiyat forums as we are doing here, in their general body meeting, in uh, looking after their the well-being, uh, seeking uh, or uh, giving the words of comfort and peace to the elderly and the sick people and taking the Atfal classes. Even if you are unable to uh, teach the Holy Quran, you can teach Salat, even the translation of the Holy Quran. We have made a digital library for the Waqf Arzi. The old resources will be given to you, all information, and then you can decide. So what Allah Ta'ala has given every person something very, you know, outstanding. You know, it could be anything which you uh, have the expertise. You convey that because whatever is happening he here in the world, we can find that is mentioned in the Holy Quran. Because if this world, uh, is, this world is created by Almighty Allah, this is the word of Almighty Allah. This is the work of Almighty Allah, the universe, and this is the word of Almighty Allah. The work of Almighty Allah definitely mentioned in the Quran. We have to find it. We have to explore it and reflect it. 
our whole life, past, present, future, of not only the one person, but for the nations, for the communities, they have been very eloquently contained in this book of guidance. This is called the Quran. Jazakumullah, I think that very, very detailed answer there. So in brief, I guess, uh, Alhamdulillah, we have the facilities in the Jamaat now uh, to learn the Quran. So there's no point in us going to Nana Ahmadis for these uh, lessons anymore. Now, this, this Quran class, is, is, it, is it an international one or is it just limited to the yeah, yeah, it is international. And I like to mention that by the grace of Allah, this is a multilingual uh, uh, international academy. And uh, our now, we are running 19th of our operation. Our operation, this time I'm in Bethel Hassan, in front of that, uh, our Itka office. Our shift, your, 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 all operation starts 6 o'clock in the morning. Now, 6 o'clock, basically, you know that this time here in is uh, quarter past six is the Fajr time. So mm -hmm. our operation starts six o'clock because at that time is in Australia, 5 p.m. Australia. And after that, you know, six o'clock, seven, eight, and then uh, Malaysia joins us. And uh, also now, even now, uh, with the next hour, because this time is uh, nine, five, five past nine, 10 o'clock, because this academy will be from 6 a.m. to 1 a.m. So 10 p.m., just after uh, one hour, uh, we will join, you know, the, the Canadian students will join. They are 5 p.m., so 6, 7. So when there will be 7 p.m., here 1 a.m. So 19 hours of operations are there, and nearly 450 uh, students are being taught, um, and it is increasing, and uh, we need a lot of uh, volunteer teachers. So if you uh, can offer your services as a volunteer teacher, this is the time to get the blessings of Almighty Allah. As the Holy Prophet said, man al -Quran wa allama. The best among you is the one who learns the Quran. And the 50%, this one learns the Quran wa allamahu and teaches it. And this is not only one day job. Everybody, I am in, in one circle. Maybe you are should will be uh, in a circle. The circle expands, but nobody should be out of the circle. Everybody should be the circle. And that is 50% that ta'allam uh, al-Quran, you, you uh, learn and wa'allama teach that. And this learning circle never ends. Jazakumullah, Jazakumullah. I think that's a very, very detailed answer there. I guess uh, you probably add one more. Maybe that is uh, how can people register? Is it a link or is it... So yeah, I, just mentioned, no, it's not, it's just mentioned, it's, uh, you go to a uh, website internationally, just uh, www.itqa.org.uk, go to student registration if you want to be as a student, if you are, want to be registered as a volunteer teacher, then you can register yourself. What happens that when you submit your application, either as a student or a, as a teacher, then your verification will be taken from the local president, whether, you know, the bona fide Ahmadi, everything, when after that, and then the next process will come. If the teachers are available, the classes are made, otherwise uh, they have to wait. And similarly, because this is a matching, you see that uh, the time and the students time matching and the teachers time matching and also the language, for example. So you want to, you know, teach in uh, English at six o'clock. Here is the students are six o'clock and the language, they match. Now, for example, we have started one class where the teacher is a German. Okay, remember, Amasa, teacher is a German. The student, three students are from uh, Malaysia. One is from Australia. They match together, German, Malaysian, and Australian. We made a class, let's go. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. I've got, I've got some questions which has come in here and I'll, I'll ask the first question for you as well to, uh, from those ones which has been asked and that is um, uh, from the hadith that you just uh, recited that Hayro Kuma Antamal Quran wa Alama and that is uh, um, does it just limit to just learning the Quran as uh, the phonetics and the Tajweed and teaching it or it also talks about the content and so if you can shed light on that Actually, it is not that uh, it is not mentioned that Khairu Kuman Ta'allama Qiraat al Quran. He says Khairu Kuman Ta'allama al Quran. And Qiraat of the Quran 
is one step one step that is the first baby step <laughs> otherwise this you know 114 chapters it includes translation it uh, includes its uh, commentary you see every knowledge is there we have to find out i said that whether you are a doctor you are basically engineer anything any profession you will find something here because this is the book of the guidance hudallin nas and our lives are written there it, you open uh, you know page number 1 of part 17 and it says that we have revealed this zikr this reminder for you in which you are remembered you are mentioned fi zikrukum remember so the recitation of the holy quran the arabic uh, the, the of the holy quran you know arabic grammar basically came out because of the holy quran the translation the commentary the other uh, sciences of the holy quran and basically the universe you know remember dr abdul salam said he said i came to my fury in which because of that he uh, won the nobel prize he said through the holy quran holy quran led me to explore that one because while i was contemplating and doing my research on the background i was listening to the verses of the holy quran recitation of the holy quran jazakumullah jazakumullah there's a, there's another question here uh, and that is uh, in brief i think what what the the question is uh, the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, was known to be uh, a great person right from childhood uh, with his own uh, teaching to the point that the arabs even call him al siddiq and uh, 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 Siddiq and obviously the trustworthy people, Al Amin as well. Uh, now, did the Quran make any impact on his life at all? Impact uh, the, the Holy Quran impact on the life of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Why not? Surah Ad Duha. There are many places in which the life of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been mentioned very eloquently. Many, many places, and you will find, you know, even the full surah. Surah name is Surah Muhammad. in every page you will find a reference you cannot find a page where the reference directly or indirectly is not to to, to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam number 1 secondly in surah ad duha it says walal akhiratu khairul lak min al ula you know under this inspiration this guidance every moment every hour of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was increasing in multiplying in all blessings and uh, the knowledge the spiritual knowledge you see uh, if a person you know i can give you one example if a person reads through the holy quran translation reflection his knowledge increases his spirituality increases this is a common person and this the holy quran which is being directly revealed to the person you know and he was the first recipient he was you know the divine wisdom with all he was comprehending all that one what will be the revelation in his mind that is why he was sometime crying when reciting the holy quran in the prayers or reflecting all the time you know serving the holy quran so that was his main source and that is the greatest miracle that was given to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam other you know the 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 miracles which have been given to for example moses or the jesus or the noah or other prophets they have just the historical accounts it just uh, came you know appeared and then they they were the part of the history this is a living miracle now 1400 years have gone the sahabas have passed away the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away this is a living miracle that hazrat masih maud rasat waslam said it can change your life if you read that even 7 days it it can change your life so that is a great and why not the the greatest impact of the holy quran which was recipient definitely the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mashallah we we have got one more question but i think uh, ibrahim uh, mutajo want to ask a question so i will let him go before i come to the next question ibrahim sir you can unmute yourself sorry i don't have to have said actually is there a question that i have i just want to say Three things, but you've answered one of them. Is about um, the International Talim Al Quran um, Academy. The other thing is that on your right there, I so much like that small, um, small picture frame that has your name on it. I wish I have one like that as well. 
Then yeah, um, the other thing I want to see, yeah, I love that, that is, one. Yeah, basically, um, that is one person came uh, in uh, Joseph Lana. It was a Chinese uh, calligraphy. calligraphy you know, he, yeah. That is written calligraphy, and that is for the Rabbi. And somebody, uh, you. you know, gave me that that gift. <laughs> well, uh, bless. That is very good. So now the, other, the last thing I want to say is I just want to see Jazakumula Khair because um, one of my, two of my kids took part in the G1 class last year and the elder one has moved to G2 and she's so much loving it. Jazakumula Khair, I like continue yeah, to strengthen you. I wish that the G1 will come back because my small boy is not in class now. Yes. Khair, thank, so thank you so much. Jazakumullah, Jazakumullah. We'll go to the next question, and that is uh, from Holy Quran, chapter 56, verse 80, which reads, none shall touch except those who are purified. And I guess this is a, a question that uh, we know the Nana Ahmadis uh, Muslims especially make a lot of uh, issue about because they will never allow anyone to touch the Holy Quran. Hafizab, what is your comment on this? You see, <clears throat> I give you, um, there are two aspects. First of all, anything which you love, you like, you give importance, you will, you know, deal that, deal with, uh, with that with the clean hands. First of all, clean hands. For example, a, a coat or anything which you say this is important, okay, you will find that your hands are clean and so that that thing is, doesn't become untidy or uh, unclean. This is the word of Almighty Allah. And the very first, you know, there is a demand or the is a requirement of the love and dedication that our hands should be clean, first of all. We should be in a, you know, possibly or recommended that in the state of voodoo ablution because we are touching the Holy Quran. So that is the basic uh, uh, requirement. When we do that, for example, you know why the Holy Prophet ﷺ used to brush his teeth before Salat? What is the secret? Because he is going to recite the word of Almighty Allah in his Salat. That is why before every Salat, he used to brush his teeth, his mouth is fresh clean, because he was reciting. You see that the words of Almighty Allah basically being printed in the air through his, uh, you know, that breath, because he was the uh, phonetically that uh, in the that voice, voice printing that was that. And uh, after that, the purification of heart. Now in the Holy Quran, it say, in the law, you hibbut tawabina wa you hibbul mutatahiri. Now you hibbut tawabina that Allah loves those who purifies or inclines towards Him, who purifies His heart and soul. That is tawab because we you know, focus our intention and concentration and towards Almighty Allah. And Al-Mutatahirin, basically the purification, uh, the physical purification, that is the in the meaning. You know, it's a, one of the prayer of the Holy Prophet, Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al-mutatahirin, especially at the time of the pollution. So the both cleanliness, the, the spiritual cleanliness, and also the physical cleanliness then becomes. And that is why, you know, it is a salat is a great means of the self purification, but we have to have the ablution. We have to have the uh, nice and clean cloth. Then we go to the Almighty Allah. Otherwise, say okay, if our uh, hands are not clean, our uh, body is not clean, but our heart is clean, and we just concentrating on the words. No, this is not the um, the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet Sallam. Physical cleanliness and the spiritual cleanliness together that is a package. And now after first step that our hands should be clean, our uh, the, 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 the place in which you we place the Holy Quran, that should be clean. That is the, the requirement. Then the next step is the self purification that our heart should also be clean. Because the important point is that, for example, if there is a glass, if this glass is uh, unclean, okay, I would not put any water or milk or anything and I will eat that because, oh, no, this is not clean. I want, you know, I want to clean. If the heart is not clean, how the word of Almighty Allah, the nur of Almighty Allah, the nurullah will come in the heart. The point is that, okay? 
because allah will not put his noor or light if the heart is not under that process if you know this glass this the container our heart is container of the spiritual wisdom the enlightenment and the world the guidance so it means the physical purification and the spiritual purification they go hand in hand we cannot uh, you know uh, ignore the significance of one and take the preference to other one you know they both you know as the physical uh, cleanliness and the spiritual cleanliness makes a a package for the salat is a very good example the salat otherwise physical cleanliness spiritual cleanliness cannot uh, make a full package of salat zakumla there's there's a leading question on from that one and that is uh, what is the situation with uh, ladies who are actually in the amends with regards to the uh, holy quran recitation yeah holy quran recitation for example if uh, she is a teacher okay that is another point because in teacher you know only that are listening or uh, something for example uh, telling that okay this is a mistake you should the in okay that is okay allowed the recitation of the holy quran as an act of worship is not recommended is forbidden it's not recommended you know according to our uh, jamaat understanding as mentioned but for teaching for other purpose it is okay is is fine but not an act of worship that okay on morning recitation i have to make or you know it is multiplying the uh, systematic the daily recitation and also i think if the salat is uh, forbidden and the rest the 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 greatest uh, uh, point of the recitation is the salat remember you see the the recitation in the presence of almighty allah is far better and more rewarding outside okay so and that is the practice of the holy prophet sallam so if the salat is forbidden and say okay you are on leave for allah you knows his wisdoms ultimate wisdom if the recitation of the holy quran is salat is uh, post under that canopy it can be understood the other side outside which is less rewarding as compared to the recitation in salat Zakumla, I guess uh, there's uh, one more question here, and that is, uh, uh, it is known that uh, we're not supposed to be reciting Surah Al-Fatiha and Sujud. Now, uh, two questions from that. One is, uh, can you recite some portions of the Holy Quran? Let's say Iya Kana Budu. That's a short one uh, when you are in Sujud. And the second question is. What is the whole essence of why we cannot recite the surah, uh, the 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 surahs or the verses when we are in sujood? Actually, the Holy Quran is a is a great book, and this is the word of Almighty Allah. That is why physically we sh- we should and we will and we do we place that on upright position. Okay, we do not uh, treat that like a Bible. You know, they are sitting on the chair and on the back there is a you know the Bible. or just you know like a book is so, okay this is a bible we treat our the book of almighty allah in physical cleanliness and the upright position with a you know dignified position now the word of almighty allah actually it is mentioned in hadith that allah taala specifically mentioned you know forbidden hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to recite the holy quran in ruku and sujood because that is the time or the place of the humbleness the humility and the total prostration when you know we are just you know we are totally uh, in submission and the the grandeur and the greatness of the holy quran demands that it should be recited when in a upright position in a qiyam position or in a sitting position but not in that so that is why you say that uh, huzur says that i have been commanded not to recite the holy quran in ruku and in sajda so we are the followers of the holy prophet sallam when he was you know forbidden and commanded not to do that we will follow him quran says fattabi'uni uh, yuhibbukumullah you follow me i will uh, uh, you know uh, i will love you so in uh, the uswa in the sunnah of the holy prophet sallam it is not allowed and if there is any uh, verse for example say iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in not as a verse of the holy quran 
but maybe you know you can say that uh, one aya rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirah that uh, beautiful prayer it has all uh, mentioned in the hadith as well with but not with rabbana but with allahumma allahumma atina fid dunya so if that is taken as a prayer of the holy prophet sallam and because the the meanings uh, or the, uh, the the words are changed then we can recite but as it is the for example rabbi zidni ilma in the in the prayer or any small rabbana atina allah taala has given us the time either we do that uh, in the qiyam position or after you know when we offer the ruku in the in the standing position or when we are in a qada position before saying salam at that time i say after dhuru sharif you know dhuru that is uh, salat ala nabi allahumma salli we say there are three four five prayers rabbana atina fid dunya hasana rabbana ghfir li many many prayers so three four times have been given that you should uh, recite the holy quran either in the prayer or if you are reciting the holy quran in the right, upright position but not in that position because that is not proved and recommended uh, under the sunna of the holy prophet sallam and we have to follow that jazakum allah i thought i said that was the last question but i think there's one last after the last which <laughs> so that would be um if we have a new uh, ahmadi who doesn't know how to recite the holy quran in any form is it so permitted who doesn't know how to recite the holy quran in any form is it still permitted to do the salat no 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 if any person for example is a tablighi convert it is uh, becomes uh, ahmadi muslim or muslim you know he should be taught even the first verse bismillahir rahmanir rahim just listen 3 4 times 10 times 20 times and he will memorize okay his memorization his training starts from that time so even if i say salat is obligatory say allahu akbar and un, uh, until they you know he memorizes or she memorizes a surah al fatiha or other it just intention is the prayer inna mal amal bin niyat if he is reciting just bismillahir rahmanir rahim multiple times and then you know in in a salat go to the rukur he doesn't know anything but and he tries to improve that one after bismillahir rahmanir rahim next alhamdulillah rabbil alamin he is on the journey it is okay because he started his journey but he doesn't mean that he has to first finish the whole prayer salat memorization until he cannot offer the prayer inna mal amalu bin niyat in the deeds are judged by intentions the motives jazakum allah ahsana ja jaza i guess uh, oh there's one more question <laughs> my question is this my question is why allah use uh, tamsili language in quran in every scripture of the world whether that is a bible there is the injil or torah or any scripture you know established religion you will find because this is the part of the human language in every literature you will find this tamsil this uh, figurative language okay and quran is not out of that one and because the human beings are used that one because there are different uh, the stages or the learning circles some are very they want 2 plus 2 and some are you know a very uh, they can understand and they can they can be um, they have their own way to understand that one for example a deeper meaning as well so when in the literature in the human literature we have the uh, this example in the before the scriptures these things have been used and when we try to convey our message for example if you want to convey something uh, want to advise your children your brothers your sister or anything you know or, or as a teacher you will give some examples so that that person understands that one in the real time situation the circumstances so that's okay uh, do not do that one you should be that uh, you know um, in that uh, on the railway station at that time otherwise you will miss the train because my friend was at that time in this this you know you will give the example and they will understand okay and if the the person in, to whom you are giving the advice know that person you know that understanding is uh, fixed okay and with regards to the other figurative native language for example if say that al lail okay that that night you know the night is night but in idioms it is used for the darkness 
and the light. You know, these are things we already know very well. And the Holy Quran appeals the human intellect, human uh, literary uh, characteristics, and the common usage. So he applies. Holy Quran is not only for one person or for one community. Every level of knowledge uh, on any stage, a person can benefit from that one. Even a five years old will be benefit if a very highly intellectual PhD or some highly scholars, they will get something from the Holy Quran, maybe from the same verse. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, maybe you say that all praise belongs to Allah, Lord of the universe, Lord of the world is clear. But when a person intellectual way from this one, you know, thinks over that, they will find many other, uh, you know, meanings on that one. So this is the part of uh, the human nature um, that appeals to that. Jazakumullah, I mean, uh, I, I don't know how much to thank you uh, for this wonderful time with us. I think uh, this brings uh, the event uh, to a close and then you look out for our next uh, English event, inshallah, next month. With this, yeah. assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah